Welcome everybody to part two of this four color Omnath list. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there are a few lists like this running around. I'm going with the one with Terror of the Peaks and Kenreth as well as an Ugin uh, and really enjoying it so far. If you missed part one, please do go check that one out. Um, we we ended up on a two and one record, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, and hopefully we will do very well this time as well. I think this is a nice starting hand. Obviously some late three drops here, but uh, that's actually not terrible for us. Um, given that our, our earliest card is really just Lotus Cobra. Uh, I'm okay with this being on top. Chances are we're going to have to mill it anyway. Um, this rogue mill deck is mean. That is for sure. Okay. Uh, surprising they played it on the black side. Um, well. I'm just going to do this and pass, I think. I think we just kind of wait and see what happens. Uh, we get to play the Dryad, hopefully, here. Um, and then turbo out a couple extra lands, uh, which is pretty good. Let's do this now. What colors do we want? Might just be blue. Yeah, I think it's just blue. We kind of need to get to three blue pretty quickly for, uh, for Genesis. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Which is a nice little blocker as well. They could have a counter easily. Um, but that's not really the worst thing in the world for them to counter. And the the reality is they burn their counters on the enablers, and then by the time they by the time we get to the late game stuff, it's it's a little too late for them to do very much. Um Alright, so play this on the white side. Let's do this. I'm playing the lamb first. I don't really think it matters that much. Um, yeah, I'm going to pay one. That's kind of fine. I don't, uh, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, let's play Fable Passage here. All right, we'll pass. Um, do have to be worried about deck size against this rogue deck, but they're not actually doing that much, so I don't feel terrible with this. Very interaction heavy. Oh. Okay, um, well, we did it. Go us. Uh, they, I think they just had a bad hand. I, I, I think that's all that was. But that's okay. Let's uh, let's jump into our next game. Um, I mentioned it in the first video as well, but uh, in case you missed the kickoff stream for the JDC, uh, please go watch that. It is on our YouTube channel. You can also just watch the replay on Twitch. Um, really, really had a fun time with that. It was. It was a really great time to be able to kind of finally announce everything because it's been so long since we started planning it. Uh, and I'm really excited. I am paired against Rachel for this uh, this first week. Um, and so I'm a little nervous uh, because she has Felled Our Retreat, which is a really good card. I have Oath of Teferi, uh, which is a very different kind of card. So uh, we'll see what we can do, but uh, it's going to be a time, I think. So uh, I actually really like this hand. Um. I think we'll actually lead with the Fable Passage here. Uh, and we can play this for red, and then we can kind of just decide which one we want to, to use later with the pathway. Um, that's kind of the bright side about these flip lands, is you, you just have so much flexibility. Um, I, I mentioned also in the first video I wanted to talk a little about about these flip lands, but I didn't actually talk about them. Um, they are very good uh, and very safe for wizards right now, I think. Um, which is probably for the best, to be honest. Um, just because it means you will be able to play your stuff, uh, which is really, really nice when it's been a bit frustrating in the past. So I'm actually okay with it. Uh, I know it's a it's an interesting mechanic, and some people probably don't love it as much, but I do think it's quite good, um, and I, I'm liking it, to be honest. I think it's very nice. Wow, those are two very good cards that they hit. Um, let's do this. Let's play the Dryad. And let's play this. Um, and again, nice thing here with the Dryad is we just now have all colors. Wow, they've hit two Genesis Ultimatums. Well, we're going to die now. Um, hmm. Don't love this, if I'm honest. Definitely not a great hand. Um, thought it was a great hand. Turns out it's not. Sit for two. 
All right. Um, this is very, very good on their end. Really? Okay. Sure. That's very good. Um, this is where we start to... This is Turbo Mill. Um, Turbo Mill is a very interesting deck, by the way. It's a very frustrating deck, for sure. But it's a very good one, technically. I can't be too mad about it. I like Mill decks, so I'm kind of with it. Did they just good game me? What the heck? Um, I think they just get to win next turn, but that's okay. Uh, I'll just play Uro. I think this is the best chance we have. The chances are we're, we're just dead here. Um, if they have any good card draw spell, which I'm sure they do because that's mostly their deck, um, then they're definitely going to win. Yeah. 25 cards left. Let's see what you can do. That's pretty good. That doesn't kill us, though, right? They keep saying good game, but they haven't technically won yet. I guess I should technically do that first, or uh, fetch first, so now we, we may not have basics in our deck. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I can just tap it, I guess, can't I? Hmm. Well, <laughs> let's uh let's make it even easier for him. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Turns out mill works pretty well against uh what we're doing. Wow, that's it. That is the only land we had. Oh, there's a Lotus Cobra. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and concede here. Uh they get to they only have to mill like ten more cards, so I don't think it's worth it. Alright. Let's jump into our last game, guys. Uh we are so far three and two. Uh so we are playing for a fourth win here. Do really ah, this deck is very good. Um and certainly I think in the in a best best of three kind of matchup, uh kind of traditional style. I think this would be even stronger. I I think uh what's What's hindering this deck from being quite as powerful on the best of one ladder is the variance that you get on the best of one ladder. Uh, you just get all kinds of stuff, and I think in a competitive environment, it's a little more focused, a little cleaner, uh, and we just we're not uh, we're not going to get that consistency here. So it makes sense that we're we're not doing quite as well as you know the first place undefeated person in the world. I'm also not as good a player, so there's that as well. Uh, I'm keeping this on the back of Lotus Cobra, essentially, um, and then really hoping we draw some lands, which that did not help, but we're going to do the best we can. Um, again, assuming we have, you know, we have 28 lands in the deck, um, you have to assume that we're going to draw some of them, but clearly we're not uh, getting so lucky this time. Oh, well, there we go. Unfortunately, it's a tap land, but that's fine. Keeping any land at this point uh, is, I think, for the best. Um... Not sure how I want to play this out here. It might just be Dryad, to be honest. Uh, or do I want to play Uro? I'm going to play Uro. Let's be different. Uh, we'll play this for white. Really only need one white at a time, but that's okay. Uh, this just gives us more land and gains us a little life, so we've got a little more blockade against, uh, you know, the powerhouse that is this deck. Um, gonna play Lotus Cobra. Gonna play Uro. Again, gain a little life. Play another land. Doesn't really matter because we can't play anything else, and we'll pass. Yep. Uh, a little light on, like, red and blue sources here. Well, we've actually... We're okay on blue. It's not great, but... 
I'm going to trade off here for the robber. Um, the bolt hound's very good as well, but I think the robber is a little more crucial for us. Escape, huh? Yeah, let's escape. Let's hit two lands. We hit two lands. You. 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 Um, Alright, well, that's pretty good. Uh, we do have Ugin next turn to just wipe. Um, which is pretty good. <laughs> Against a mono red deck, I feel okay about that. Um, and I do think we just inherently need to block with the Dryad here, regardless of what they do, just to make sure that, you know, we don't just straight die. Um, that Bolt Hound, man. Could they have Embercleave here? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That keeps us just alive. Yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. I miscounted. Oh, terrible. They just got us. Uh, I was playing around Embercleave. I wasn't thinking about the, uh, the devotion. All right. Well, I think we were just a turn away from winning there, to be honest, but that's okay. Uh, well done, opponent. That was great. Uh, all right. That was much quicker also than the, the first video, but let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, cause I do think it's important to talk about this. This deck is very good. Uh, we only had a three, three, uh, record. That's not to say that this is a very like super accurate representation, just because again, you need to look at traditional best of three matches to really understand how it goes. But this is just to give you an idea uh, of what you can expect with the deck. And I think um, I prefer the best of one ladder, so that's why I play there. But uh, this is a very, very strong deck. There is no no way around it. Uh, once you can go off with it, it is done. I mean, you're, you're done. There's nothing you can do. It is crazy good. Um, I say that with the caveat that like kill spells obviously are helpful and then just counter spells. Um, I know that that's like a safe argument because um, you know, generally counter spells are like, oh, well, duh, you can just counter anything. Um, but I, I think that this is a little bit trickier to play around than a lot of other decks. Um, and because there's so much synergy in terms of ramp, uh, you can really time it to where you need to, to just be able to take over the game. Uh, and so that I think is a very huge strength with this deck. Now, do I think it needs to get banned? Not yet. Um, I would argue... Uh, Uro is very, very good, and Omnath are very, very good. I would hate to see Omnath be banned so quickly, uh, just given that it just came out. It's been less than a week, and it's already in talks. But um, I know Uro is a big contention point. Uh, some people are saying Uro might need to be banned. Maybe so, but I would wait and see just a little bit longer. Uh, let's get some more data in, and let's see what kind of decks work well against it. I mean, we saw ourselves there not being able to quite handle Mill, and that's kind of a silly strategy, I know, but, um, you know, if Omnath takes over, it becomes a very viable strategy. So I think uh, I think we just need to have a little bit more time for it to level out. We're not even a week in yet. Uh, so I, I think there's a little more data to be had there before we kind of make that call. But regardless, this is a very fun deck. If it does get banned, I highly suggest you try and play it beforehand just so you've got that opportunity under your belt. Keeping in mind that it is wildcard heavy, so please don't, you know, just up and waste all your wild cards on things that are going to get banned but um i do think that it's a very solid deck uh it obviously is doing well and in, in competitions elsewhere so uh i it's very very good um but it is also fun to play so that's really important but thank you guys so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this one this is a really interesting deck uh and we'll uh we'll see you again very soon for another one so thanks for watching guys